this is the photo I put up to Instagram. Now, what happened after that was everybody sending me a message, just like literally flooding of the inbox of how could you possibly make a bong like that without a lathe? Well, I've got a great episode for TFS Fast Fab, a full length quick fix or modification in less than five minutes. Let's get on it. Here we go. So we'll start this off with some scrap metal here. I have a piece of half inch plate, 6061 variety, and I'm gonna get it set up into the vise. Now this is just kind of an old trick that I learned a while back. Smack it down from the top with a hammer, you know, make, you know, kind of eliminate parallels. It's not crucial that it's, you know, perfectly straight or anything like that. And of course this facing, this is just force of habit. Absolutely not crucial. So I'm not sure why I did it anyway. But anyway, we're gonna switch it out uh, to the drill chuck and we're gonna toss a little uh, drill bit in here. This is just my pilot hole to get uh, everything basically set up. So wherever I position it, of course, we gotta make sure that we have enough room for the entire bung. And as soon as this hole is drilled, the vise and the position of this will not move. Once the pilot hole is finished, we're gonna switch out to an end mill. Now you can use a nominal drill size, whatever you want. Now this is for an intake temperature sensor bung and on intercooler piping, I like them to be uh, uh, very low. I like to make sure that they sit very low. So this is a 5.8 size hole that I'm drilling in here with the end mill because I'd like it nice and true, but it is much larger than the tap and uh, it's to make it sit very low. Now I know a lot of machinists out there are gonna grill me religiously for using a uh, crescent wrench to thread this in there, but you know, it's whatever. <laughs> so after we get that threaded up, we'll uh, switch out again to the drill chuck. And this time I'm gonna add a countersink to uh, clear out the inside of that hole, make it nice easy to uh, get our threaded piece in there. As soon as that's finished up, we're going to grab a hold of the hole saw. Now this has a nice arbor around the side of it, around the outside of it, which happens to fit into my mill, uh, into the collet. So I'm just going to slap this inside of here, get it nice and tight, and this allows me to get an extremely uh, precise hole cut. Now when it comes to cutting this out with the hole saw, make sure that you go nice and easy and allow those chips to clear. We want to try to minimize the amount of uh, gouging on the actual outside of the part, what will become the outside of the part. So we make sure you clean it off nice and easy and this should be somewhat of your result. We did have some gouging in here and of course we have this little lip on it that we got to get rid of. Now if you wanted to run with it just like this you could actually install it you know perfectly fine you'd be good to go but I like to get it a little cleaned up so I'm gonna thread a 3 8 MPT barb into my drill, chuck it up into there and then we're gonna thread the part on here and then after sticking the grinder in the vise I'm going to use this to actually spin it down and get rid of some of that gouging. Now this is just the rough finish on it and you got to be careful about how you grind it down because it can taper on you. Then we're going to chase it out with some sandpaper. Now, this is a rather aggressive grit but it's 60 grit and if you spin it on there you get most of the uh, gouging out of it and most of the, uh, the marks out of it. This will get most of your general shaping down. Pretty easy day. Once that's finished, we're going to flip it over and I'm going to take care of the top end of it. I'd like to give a nice little chamfer to the outside uh, edge just to kind of clean it up a little bit and then we'll use uh, the file here to do that. I'm going to attack the face of it. I'm going to knock down that edge there to get a nice little chamfer on it and then I'm going to try and flatten this out as best as possible to make the uniformity of it a lot nicer. Uh, it, you know, get rid of some of that taper that was uh, achieved from the grinder there that we didn't really want on it. So use a nice file, clean it all up simple work just sit there and spin it and let it run as soon as you have your general shape done grab a hold of a surface prep pad and we'll just get it all polished up and ready to weld and here's the end result there is a nice clean looking bung ready to weld straight off the machine and it did not require a lathe to make it happen so there you have it. It's not that complicated to do. It just requires a little bit of ingenuity, some attention to detail, and you'll have yourself a bung quite easily without the use of a lathe. I mean, I've been doing it for years. So hopefully that helps some of you guys out. Maybe you can apply that to some other pieces and parts and all the rest of that good stuff. Now I want to thank you guys for watching. As always, don't forget to subscribe to the Fabrication Series YouTube channel for more really awesome content. Make sure you check the description below for you to follow along on Instagram, Facebook, and the FabricationSeries.com website. I will see you guys on the next episode.